I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3 is our text. Uh, if uh, you don't have a Bible, that's perfectly fine. Grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you if you are at our Sweetwater campus or our McCulloch campus. And if you're at our Parker campus, there's a table right back in the middle with Bibles on it. Go ahead and, and step back there right now. Grab one of those Bibles and turn to page 1166 and you will find Philippians chapter 3. And as always, even though it's a new year, this is the same old thing, if you need a Bible, you don't have one and you want one, then please take one of those with you. It is our gift to you because we want you to have the Word of God and read the Word of God because we know if you do that, God's going to change your life. So, uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Hey, this, hey, by the way, Calvary is one church in three locations. You might have picked that up already. And, uh, and that's been the case for exactly one year today. So... Right. And what's so amazing about that is that actually today, remember, we are one church, three locations. So Parker Campus, you are celebrating one year anniversary and throwing a big party this afternoon. And we're all excited about what God has done there. Uh, they're averaging 76 Parker residents. Uh, they're in worship each week, and they've seen 12 baptisms over this past year. So, Parker, we're thrilled about how God is working among you. We're excited for you, and let's celebrate together. Yeah. Congratulations. God, you know, God is doing amazing things in Parker. He's also doing amazing things at our McCulloch campus. This past year, we've averaged over 200 in worship at uh, the McCulloch campus. And, and a lot of you uh, ha have heard about the McCulloch campus, and some of you have visited over there and checked it out. Uh, it's a little different style, uh, but uh, I'm just going to encourage you to, to, to check it out sometime. In fact, I'm going to be there next weekend at 9.30 and 11 if you want to come and check it out and see what it's all about and celebrate with them because God is doing a great work. By the way, the reason we started worshiping at the McCulloch campus is because we're running out of space here at Sweetwater at 9.30 and 11. And so we wanted to give people an option and a place to go because uh, our mission is to reach people, to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And if we're going to do that, we've got to have a place to put them. So, uh, you know, so let's celebrate McCulloch Campus as well because God is work, doing That's work right. there. So again, Happy New Year. Can, can you guys believe it's 2020? You know, uh, what, a, what an amazing uh, opportunity it is because half of us didn't expect to be alive right now. And, uh, and the fact that we are and we don't have flying cars is, is still a little bit disappointment. We but, are disappointed uh, by that. Anyway, but a new year is a time for new beginnings. It's a time for, you know, that official transition where we all, if we wrote checks, would write the wrong date on them. Uh, but uh, it's also a time for a moment of reflection. It's for us to kind of pause and, and look back as we're looking ahead and, and make that transition in our hearts and minds about the differences. And the Apostle Paul captures this in two verses in Philippians chapter 3. Now, the, the verses are not about a new year. They're about a new life in Christ and how we're to live it uh, every single day. But it's especially appropriate to hear on the first weekend of the new year. Sure. So let me read Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 13 and 14. And that's on page 1166 uh, in the Bible that you might have from underneath the seat in front of you. Paul said, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now we can read that passage of scripture. The very first thing I want to make sure everybody understands is the Apostle Paul was not advocating amnesia. We, we all remember our past. We all remember our mistakes. We all have those regrets. We all have struggled with guilt before. Uh, whatever difficulties and challenges that have happened to us, the challenge here is not to dwell in the past, not to continue to allow the past to beat us up as we go forward into the future, uh, our past mistakes. So let me ask you a question. I have made past mistakes this year. I have made mistakes Raise your hand if you have made mistakes this past year. <laughs> Some of the spouses were going, yeah, get your hand up. As long as we don't have to name them. Right. Now, on the count of three, I want everyone to say what they were. Just kidding. 
We all have. And God does not want us to live burdened down by guilt, burdened down by shame, burdened down by regret about our past sins and mistakes. So in order for us to move forward in 2020, we have to trust that God's grace covers our stupidity. We have to trust that God's grace is sufficient enough to cover our sins, whether they were intentional sins or or sins that we committed, uh, we didn't really mean to. It doesn't matter. God's grace is sufficient. And and that also means uh, about our past successes. Yeah. So we want to forget our past failures, but we also need to forget our past successes because uh, it's easy to get lost in the glory days. Isn't it? Whether the glory days were 20 years ago or last year, it doesn't matter. Because uh, sometimes we, we focus on how successful we've been, and the truth is we've, we're not finished yet. If you're still breathing right now, then you're not finished yet. We have more to learn. We have more to become. We have more to accomplish. We are on mission for Jesus until he calls us home. So how do we relate to the past? We all have a past. How do we relate to it? We know we think about it. Uh, We know we remember it. So what do we do with the past as we move into the future that God has for us? Well, first thing we need to do is we need to learn to celebrate the past. We need to learn to celebrate the past, what God has done. Over the last year, God has been faithful. Over the last year, God has taught you through the mistakes that you've made, uh, through the sin that you've experienced. God has demonstrated generosity and grace to you and forgiveness to you. Uh, God has worked in marriages. God has worked in families. Uh, God is at work. And so we celebrate that. It's a reason to celebrate and rejoice. We can look at our mistakes if we've learned and say, thank you, God, for what you've taught me. And also we look at uh, uh, what God has done here in Calvary as a whole. Do you know that in the year 2019, we saw 147 new followers of Jesus get baptized? Woo-hoo. That's worthy of celebrating. That's incredible. That's incredible. In fact, it's amazing because each one of those people who have been baptized, they've had a moment where they've said, I can't do this on my own. I can't forgive myself, God. I accept your forgiveness. They've been changed. They've been made new. They've been transformed by the life-changing power of the gospel. And then they said, after they've received Jesus, I want everyone to know. And I want to celebrate. And I want to follow Jesus in obedience and get baptized. And so they've made their way to the waters either here or at Parker or at our McCulloch campus. And they were baptized. In fact, we believe so strongly in celebrating that. We want you to know that if you've made a decision to follow Jesus and you've not yet been baptized, today we want to give you an opportunity to spontaneously be baptized. You might go home a little damp, uh, but we, we, we've got a care. shirt for you, right? Yeah. And God doesn't care. I mean, think about it. The people in the New Testament, they went home damp when they were baptized. We want you to know we've got water. It's warm. I will baptize you at the close of our service after communion. If you've given your life to Jesus and not yet been baptized, we want to help you follow through with baptism and celebrate that. And why not today? Why not today? It's the, it's the beginning of the year. Just let your commitment be lived out. So we're excited. We're celebrating baptisms because that's evidence of life change. Uh, the second most exciting thing that I celebrate as part of Calvary is the generosity of Calvary. Because 2019 saw Calvary give over $750,000 to mission causes around the world. You guys did that. Yeah. You guys did that. And, and, and to me, that's, that's incredible. Now, understand, when you give to Calvary, every single dollar goes to ministry. We use, use it completely. But 22 cents out of every dollar, 22% of our budget goes to mission causes outside of Calvary. So from Lake Havasu City and Parker to the ends of the earth, uh, money is being given to promote ministry that is happening beyond the walls and the ministry of our church location. And some of that is the benevolence offering that we're taking at the communion. Last year, you guys gave about $70,000 to our communities just to care for people. And I love that generosity. Awesome. Uh, You know. So, uh, so I'm celebrating our generosity. And so not only in our area of, of generosity, but in our area of baptisms, but also life groups. 
Christy and I began our life group this year at Calvary, and we love the people in our life group. We're continuing to get to know them. I'm not going to pretend that we're all best friends at this point, but we're growing closer and we're developing deeper relationships. We had over 1,149 participants in 73 life groups this past year at Calvary. That's pretty cool. It wasn't that long ago we were running 200 in Sunday school, right? (laughs) And what God has done through that life groups is absolutely amazing. And we look forward to continuing to see people get involved and grow into deeper more meaningful relationships because that's where we believe change occurs in the context of relationships and and, uh and to go along with that not only and by the way if you're not in a life group we want you in a life group we really do that's why you should go out and sign up for one right after the service uh for fpu uh and uh and in 2019 uh calvary one church three locations averaged 2058 people on a weekend on our three campuses uh, yeah. You guys are part of those, so thanks for being here. Uh, that number doesn't happen without you. But uh, yeah, some of you are like, do we clap at that? Because <laughs> we're clapping for ourselves uh, showing up. Now, hey, we celebrate that. We track that because if our mission is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of his people and the power of his truth, we got to know if people are showing up uh, and if we're having more people. Like I said, we started our McCulloch campus because we ran out of space here after only three years at our Sweetwater campus. And so I praise God for that. So we celebrate this moment, but we reflect on what God has taught us. Uh, and, and so as we celebrate, we also want to pause and just go, okay, what have we learned? So uh, Joe Donahue has been uh, associate pastor here at Calvary for exactly one year this weekend. One, one year. year. So welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, so what are some of the things that God has taught you since you moved to paradise and joined the amazing Calvary family? Yeah. And so let me, <laughs> yes, let me just. Hey, you're supposed to read what I said. Well, <laughs> I am grateful for Pastor Chad. <laughs> he is wonderful. What happened to Brilliant? (laughs) Anyway. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Um, We, Christy and I, my family, we love living in Lake Havasu. It is absolutely amazing. It's almost as though we're living in a postcard. That's how we feel. Uh, we get up in the mornings, uh, the, the sky is blue, uh, the water's blue, people around us are happy, everyone's enjoying the sunshine. Uh, it's just such a wonderful place, and so we're so grateful for that and grateful that God brought us here. Uh, I'll share one quick thing um, about myself and then uh, what I've learned over the last year and then a couple things about Calvary that I've been able to observe. Uh, one thing about myself that I've learned is that uh, pride is deceptive. Uh, pride can be sneaky. And even coming here, uh, you know, I recognized that I was giving up a, a larger salary to come here to be a part of what God was doing, and I was okay with that. But what I had to learn throughout the year was that uh, in order for me to experience uh, everything that God wants for me, I have to continue to be humble. And you can't be humble uh, and be prideful at the same time. It's not a possibility. And I learned that God wanted to provide for me through the generosity of other people. Um, Last year, I stood on this platform and I said one of my largest struggles was uh, when faced in a crisis, uh, I'll turn to the three M's, myself, uh, money, or medicine, you know, and that I often do that. And so over the last year, I've been trying to not do that. And I've discovered that that pride is one of those obstacles that has to go uh, to the curb. Um, I discovered that God wants to bless me through others and that in order for God to bless me through others, I have to be humble enough to receive being blessed by others, which is harder than one might think. So, for instance, um, God's uh, provided for us. Uh, One of the things that we did when we relocated here, I sold my $600 a month car payment. Let that be a push for FPU if you have a $600 a month car payment. Uh, I sold my $600 a month car payment and somebody from the church family donated a car to the church. So I I left, walked away from my big four-wheel drive, four-door, black leather, chrome you're lusting right Beautiful now in front of everybody. Chevrolet truck and humbled me, and now I'm driving a Volkswagen convertible Beetle. <laughs> Big difference. But you know what I've learned? It still gets me everywhere I want to go. 
And, it, and that's a way that God has provided for me. Another way that God has provided for me is there was a family in the church uh, that, that donated a timeshare for us in Hawaii. So we were able to go celebrate our 20-year anniversary in a tropical destination, a place that we'd never been, because of the generosity of other people. I, I would have never been able to experience that otherwise. And so I'm so grateful and humbled by that. Uh, and it's through the generosity of other people. So the thing that God has taught me over the last year is uh, just be humble and receive. You know, be humble and receive help and ask for help when you need help. But, but be humble. And, uh, and here's something that God has taught me about the church, and it's along these lines. I've been blown away at the generosity of this church been blown away. We already talked about what was given and what was raised. Uh, this past spring, we announced a par partnership with Compassion International to build a Compassion Center that would function as a church and as a school uh, in Honduras. And we said, hey, we need $75,000 to build that building. And you gave it. Not only did you give it, you gave above and beyond. So not only did we build a building, but then we were able to take an additional $25,000 and furnish that building. That's generosity. And because of the generosity of Calvary stepping up to the plate and doing that and giving, we have children on, uh, in another place in third world countries that are able to receive an education, able to receive meals, able to hear about Jesus, all because of people from Lake Havasu City and Parker giving so that we can see God work there. So I'm blown away by your generosity. I really, really am. And not only that, uh, not to mention our wells. Don't forget our wells that we raised money for, right? And so we were able to, to raise money. We put that out there and said we need to build wells in Africa. And Calvary people said, I'm going to give to that. It's amazing. And so we're just so blessed to be a part of that. And also, isn't this guy pretty good? I mean, it's not in my notes. But so blessed to be able to, to, to work with and to follow Pastor Chad as he continues to lead our church to keep the the main thing, the main thing, because a lot of churches get focused on a lot of different things that don't matter, and Chad helps keeps us focused on Jesus and grace, and it's an, it's an awesome thing to be a part of. Well, thanks, and uh, so we got reason to celebrate. We celebrate what God has done, uh, but until Jesus calls us home or concludes history, we got to do what the Apostle Paul challenges to do. We press on. We press on. So uh, let's talk about the future. What, what are we, you know, really pressing on toward. So uh, we're going to celebrate the past, but we want to anticipate the future. Anticipate the future. So 2020 is upon us. And uh, beside all the vision jokes, uh, we're expecting incredible things this year. I don't know about you. Uh, we're all hoping and praying for incredible things, but we're actually expecting uh, these, these really exciting things to happen. For instance, I'm excited about Unleashed and Financial Peace University. Okay, we've been talking about it, we've been promoting it, we've been, uh, you know, encouraging you to sign up for it, to, to spend the $49 to, to help your family, because we really do want every family to benefit and participate and to grow in financial health and in marriage health and in family health and spiritual freedom. So uh, I'm just going to encourage you, sign up uh, today. Uh, you've got today and next week, but when the books sell out, the books sell out. I, I mean, that's it. We bought 390 uh, packets and, and when we run out of those, we don't get that, that discount price anymore. So uh, they go up to the full price, and I don't want you to have to pay that. So go ahead and grab them and encourage your, your friends, your coworkers, your, your family members that need it uh, to, to come and participate as well. Because this is a great opportunity, a life-changing opportunity uh, for families here in Lake Havasu City and Parker. Yeah, and, and also we have a, a goal. We, we saw 147 people baptized last year. We have a new goal for this year. And that goal is to see 200 people give their lives to Jesus and follow the Lord in baptism. Because we believe life change occurs when we teach God's word and we know that that's going to happen. Here's, here's where you come into that. Don't you want to see 200 people give their life to Jesus this next year? Amen. Wouldn't you like to see them baptized? Amen. What an incredible goal. That is a God-sized goal, and it, we need you to do that. We need you to continue to invite, continue to encourage, continue to serve in our community. We need you to be involved in sharing the truth and inviting them to Calvary so that they can experience life change. So 200 baptisms this year, I believe that God can do that, and I believe that God can use you to do that as well. Amen, amen. So if we're going to keep reaching people, 
If we're going to keep leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, guess what we're going to need? We're going to need more space. We're going to need more space. That's, that's reality. We're already out of space. We're already expanding to other campuses. Uh, and so uh, in, in this year, you're going to see us present plans for, for what we think we need to build next here at Sweetwater, uh, which is a multi-purpose uh, building uh, with some offices because, uh, you know, we don't have enough offices. We don't have enough space. So we're out of room for children on the weekends. We're already running out of space here at Sweetwater, and we want to have multi-purpose space that we can use for kids on the weekend. We're running out of space for everybody during the week. Uh, I mean, we, if you, people come to us all the time, hey, can we use a room? We don't have a room. And so we want to have some multi-purpose space that people can meet in, whether it's adult Bible studies, uh, women's Bible studies during the daytime, or, you know, groups in the evening, uh, Celebrate Recovery, whatever the group is that needs the space, we want to provide that space. Not only that, but we also, uh, Parker Campus, I hope you guys are listening, but we need a permanent location in Parker to do ministry seven days a week. And, and uh, you know, because right now, the, the school district that we're partnering with is phenomenal. We love the fact that, that Parker High School is a great location for worship, but we need some place during the week to meet, whether it's uh, for the Bible studies or whether it's for the youth groups or whether it's for Celebrate Recovery. We need those places where we can do ministry seven days a week in Parker, just like we do in Havasu. And as we talk about building, I want you to understand we are going to reach unchurched people in Havasu and Parker this year. We will reach unchurched people. You know why I know that? Because many of you at one point were unchurched yourselves. Many of you weren't involved in church. Many of you didn't, maybe you didn't grow up in church, but you considered yourself unchurched. In fact, by a show of hands, if you would consider yourself sometime within the last 10 years unchurched, would you raise your hand? Look at that. Look around. We believe that we're going to reach more and more unchurched people because we're telling them about Jesus and we're going to see life change occur. So we want to continue to reach people just like you. We plan on, by the year 2021, launching a North Calvary campus in the mall. Uh, so in 2021, I know it sounds crazy. Did I say that correctly? Because you guys looked at me crazy. It, it, if we crazy, really believe... Okay. The gospel can change lives. We need to plan on preparing facilities where God's going to continue to change lives. So we would like to have a north campus in Cal uh, of Calvary in the mall on the north side of town. Hi Havasu Heights is a growing area. We have an RV park that's growing out there. We've got people that are traveling in from 40 minutes away unless they drive like Pastor Chad and gets here in 15. Um, <laughs> But we want to put a church on the north side of Havasu so we can continue to make a difference. Yeah. So we rejoice in the past. We anticipate the future. And we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. Because you can't follow Jesus and stay where you are. You know, change is one of the core values at Calvary. And, and we really believe that God is always calling each of us to, to actively follow Jesus, which means there's, make, there's changes we need to make. And, and we talked about the next steps for Calvary. We shared with you kind of what we're celebrating in the past. We talked about what we're thinking that God is leading us to in the future. That's what we believe we need to do. But what about you? Because we're going to follow Jesus into these new endeavors while we continue to celebrate Jesus in worship and continue to serve our communities and, and continue to see lives changed by the power of the gospel so what did you see God do in your life last year? Well, what is it that, that and, and by the way, uh, I would love for you to have this conversation uh, with your friends, uh, with your family, maybe over your next meal, uh, to kind of talk about these questions. Uh, some of you have already reflected on this. Some of you haven't had time to. But what can you celebrate about 2019? What can you look back at and say, I praise God for this? I'm celebrating this, this victory, this freedom, this action, this, uh, you know, blessing. And also, what are you grieving from 2019? What kind of pain did you endure? What kind of loss did you suffer? What, what, what broke your heart this past year? Whether it was something that you did that was, uh, you know, as we've already talked about, something stupid and self-destructive, or whether it was just somebody else and what happened in their life that affected you. What are you grieving? Because we've got to acknowledge the things that we grieve and we've got to acknowledge the things that we should celebrate so that we can lay them at the feet of Jesus uh, and deal with that. So I, I hope that, that you will take some time and really answer those questions. And it may take you all week to do it, but what are you celebrating and what are you grieving from this past year? And then when you can identify that, give thanks. Pause and thank God for that. 
receive the grace that he gives you and commit to do what? Press on. Press on. And that, that does take us to our most crucial question because everything that we've talked about is awesome, what God has done in the past. But the whole point of Philippians 3 was not to focus on the past, right? The whole purpose was to talk about what God wants to do in the next. So let me ask you a question. What is your next? What does God want you to do? What is he calling you to give up? What is he calling you to lean into? Is there an area that he's calling you to serve? What is God calling you to press on toward? Because we all know this. True followers of Jesus don't stay the same. True followers of Jesus experience change. They experience transformation. And that means they get out of their comfort level, they get out of their box, and they begin to do. So what is your next what is it that it, it god has called you to do so here's some possible next steps and, and and you just need to go ahead and have that conversation with the holy spirit because i believe if he's in you he's already talking to you about next some things you need to do uh but uh what about this are, are you going to read through the new testament this year uh how many how many of you read through the new testament last year a lot of hands went up a lot didn't so here's the thing we're going to challenge you to do it again those of you that didn't make it through the new testament last year Pick it up and read it and get to know Jesus. Get to know about Jesus. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. So one chapter a day, and you start now, you'll be finished in September. And that'd be incredible. Day. And, uh, and it would be incredible. And I'm just going to say this. And if those of you who just said, I, I finished it this last year, uh, do it again. Because there's a lot of it you didn't remember. Uh, and so go ahead and keep reading it. We're not going to learn it enough. We need to keep reading it over and over and over again. Yeah, or uh, read through Psalms and Proverbs. If you're done reading the New Testament, read through Psalms and Proverbs. It's a great place to, and to read. And start them again. Right? And start those again as well. Yeah. Uh, also join a life group. Seriously, uh, you hear us talk about life groups all the time, but that's because we do believe change happens best in the context of relationships and if you feel alone, if you feel isolated, if you feel left out in 2019, is it because you're not involved with a life group? It may be. So sign up for a life group. On Tuesday nights, we, we're going to be meeting here for FPU or for Unleashed. McCulloch. Uh, McCulloch. <laughs> Tuesday nights, we're going to be meeting at McCulloch. Thursday nights, we're going to be meeting here at Sweetwater. And if you are a young married couple with children, you will love the Thursday night schedule because there is free child care. And you will love that. Provided so, by the generosity of Calvary. Provided by the generosity <laughs> of people here. So that's another place to do. Not only read the Bible, uh, but to get involved in a life group. Hey, uh, one more reason to join a life group. Uh, Proverbs says the one who walks with the wise becomes wise. So hang out with people who, who are following Jesus. He'll help you be, as a follower of Jesus. Another thing you can do for next step is um, serve. Join a serve ministry. There's, there's all kinds of teams you can be a part of. You can be part of First Impressions team. If you're friendly, you can be part of the, you know, <laughs> Calvary Kids Ministry. If you like kids, uh, you can be a part of our prayer ministry. You can be part of our tech ministry. You can be part of our worship arts. If you have talent, um, you know, you don't want to be a part of a weekly ministry, then get involved in one of our events. We've got the the Tim Tebow Night to Shine, a prom for special needs uh, adults in in February, and we're going to need like 300 volunteers for that. And if you can't do anything but stand and cheer on these, these kids and adults, then come and do that because that's going to be a beautiful night. Or, or help out with teacher appreciation or go on a mission trip. Uh, Jesus said, if you want to be great, serve. Yeah, and, and invite a friend. Just, just inviting a friend. Do you know that the number one reason why people don't come to church is because they're not invited? So invite a friend. Invite a friend to join you. Invite a, a friend to come and sit with you. And help them understand that, hey, we're, we do 30-minute sermons and 30 minutes of worship, and we're out the door in an hour. We want people to know what to expect. And so just simply reach out and invite a friend. Yeah. And, and of course, the, the most important next step anyone could take that's here is decide to follow Jesus. If you're sitting here and you know that you've never made that life-changing commitment to claim Jesus as Lord and Savior, that we want you to make that decision today. Uh, we, we would love for you to talk to one of us about it, whether it's members of the prayer team afterwards or one of the pastors uh, out front afterwards, uh, or even uh, both of us will be available after the service. We'd love to talk with you about making that life-changing commitment to Jesus. There's nothing more important that you can do in 2020 than that commitment. Or if you're here and you know that you're a follower of Jesus and you have never been baptized, we're going to throw that gauntlet down again. 
Uh, how about getting baptized right now? Like, you know, don't argue. Don't give Satan a chance to convince you. Otherwise, you know that Jesus right now, the, the Holy Spirit's pulling on your heart going, come on, you can do it. You can get new clothes. It's okay. You can drive home wet. It's fine. You, it, don't be afraid to do it. You've been putting it off, putting it off. Putting, you thought about getting baptized Christmas Eve. You thought about getting baptized in the lake last summer. And, and you go, I need to. Well, then here's what we're going to ask you to do. In just a moment, we're going to celebrate communion. During communion, get up. Pastor Joe is going to be right over there to, you know, to my right, to your left, over by the baptistry exit. And, and just meet him over there. And uh, he'll take you backstage, and we'll hook you up, and we'll baptize you at the end of the service. And we'll all go crazy celebrating that somebody is deciding to follow Jesus in obedience right now, right in front of us, real time in this moment. Uh, because you've got excuses, but none of them really hold water. <laughs> if you're going to follow Jesus, if you're going to follow Jesus, it goes through the waters of baptism. And if you're sitting here going, I, I really want to follow Jesus, uh, is he telling you to do that? So uh, it, it's a great way to start off celebrating your faith in 2020. So let's pray as we close out uh, our service today. Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. Thank you for the life change that we've seen happen in marriages and in families. Thank you for the life change that we've seen occur in our own hearts. Thank you, God, for the way that you've worked through the generosity of the, the people of Calvary, knowing that there are children today who are drinking water and from wells in Africa today because of the generosity of Calvary in 2019. Lord, thank you so much for the way that you've worked through our church family to impact the world. And now, God, we do ask that if there are individuals who have not yet chosen to follow you uh, through baptism, to let the world know, hey, I've been changed. God, we pray that you would give them the confidence and the boldness to, to be able to be baptized today. And Lord, we commit our service to you. We commit our communion to you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.